Okay, the following is a video over two six notes, and this is titled Algebraic Proof. And uh, we're going to, chapter two is really the start of doing proofs and logical reasoning. Um, but we start off with algebraic proofs before we start doing geometric proofs. And guys, whenever you solve an equation, okay, whenever you solve problems, um, you have your algebraic steps. And these are all your steps that you use. Um, the only difference that what we're going to be doing is we're going to be justifying our steps. Okay, so each step is justified. All right. So uh, what I want you to do uh, is take a look at these. Um, whenever you have these properties of equality, and that's what they all are, um, they mean that equations stay balanced. Okay, so these allow, these are the steps that allow you to solve equations. All right. And so when we add things to both sides, okay, remember how if, you know, if you've got something like 2 plus 2, or I'm sorry, if you have the statement that 2 is equal to 2, okay, if I add 1, if I add 1 to one side, I have to add 1 to the other side, and that gives us that 3 is equal to 3, okay? We keep true statements, okay? So that's what the subtraction property is. You subtract things from both sides, multiplication, you multiply things on both sides, uh, the division property of equality, that means that you divide the same thing on both sides. Um, the reflexive property means that, you know, 3 is equal to 3, okay? That something is equal to itself. Uh, symmetric property means that you can move things uh, on either side of the equal sign. Okay, the transitive property, and we'll use this quite a bit. Um, you know, if A is equal to B and B is equal to C, then A is equal to C. So, um, and then the substitution property, and a lot of, and the distributive property. A lot of these things you guys already know, um, and you use them, but you don't provide those reasons when you actually do algebra, okay? So I'm going to go through one of these problems, and, um, and, and we're going to go ahead and, and see what we, what we can do. All right, so here's the table again. This is, I put this in your notes so that you guys can always reference what these are. Um, but here's what I've got. You've got this problem here, okay? And it's worked out over here. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually gonna work it out and show you, um, you know, step by step, um, what I would do here. So, two, okay, six x plus two times the quantity x minus one is equal to thirty. And um, the first step that you've got is the given statement. Okay, we'll talk more about that when we start doing geometric proofs. Um, but we want to prove that x is equal to 4, okay? So we want to prove that x is equal to 4. So uh, what I would do if I was doing this, I would distribute the 2, okay, to solve. Oh, look, the distributive property, and that's what they do here. So I do 6x plus 2x minus 2 is equal to 30. Um, and then this step here where they go 6x and 2x and give you 8x, they use this thing called the substitution property. I com I call this one combine like terms. So combine like terms. Okay, it can be used in this case. So I've got 8x minus 2 is equal to 30. Okay, and then I would add 2 to both sides. Okay, oh, that's the addition property of equality. That's what they do there. So then I've got 8x is equal to 32. Uh, divide by 8, divide by 8. And then all of a sudden... Okay, eight, 8 divided by 8, that gives me x, and that's equal to 4. Okay, and that's a division property of equality. When the book does these, okay, they do them, and they're very, <coughs> excuse me, they're very um, specific and particular with what they do. Guys, I'm not going to be that particular, okay? You don't need to always write that if you combine like terms, that 8x is the same as saying 6x plus 2x. You can just say combine like terms. Uh, when you take negative 2 plus 2 and then 30 plus 2 and simplify this, you, you, you don't, that's one of those steps where I'm not really going to be too particular about things, okay? So let's go through uh, an example um, and go through exactly what they say, all right? Um, and, and when you're given something, you're given, a, you're given an equation, you're given some information, and then you're asked to prove that x is equal to 3. And so what it wants is that it says, these are your steps in this column, these are the steps, and this is the reasons why. So why did you do things, okay? 
so and they've given some some of these are blank some of these you can um, you know go through um, uh, they give you some of the steps, so let's just fill in the blanks. All right, so this first one, 4x plus 6, all divided by 2 is equal to 9. Okay, this is given to you, all right? That's what you're given, all right? And folks, let me tell you what. Christmas came early. This is a gift, okay? Accept it for what it is. It's been given to you. Do not return it, okay? This is a gift. Merry Christmas. If you don't celebrate Christmas, happy Hanukkah. If you don't do any of that, then happy Kwanzaa, all right? So, otherwise, happy holidays. It's been given to you. All right, in any case, um, on this one, it says the multiplication property, okay? Now, what I would do, because you want to get X by itself, I, you're dividing by 2. The opposite of dividing by 2 is multiplying by 2, so you need to put a 2 here, all right? And that shows the multiplication property of equality. The 2 ends up dividing out, and you get 18, or, and you get 2 times 9, which gives you 18, they're going to say that this is the substitution property. I would just say that you simplified this, okay, that you simplified that. All right, and then if you had 4x plus 6, you would subtract both sides by 6, and that's what they've done here. So this is the subtraction property of equality. Okay, so subtraction property of equality. And then uh, the, they, the next one is substitution. Okay, 6 minus 6 goes to 0. 18 minus 6 gives you 12. Okay, and that substitution, you could also call that simplify. Okay, and so, and then the next thing you want to do is divide both sides by 4. So divide that by 4, the division property of equality. So I'm going to do 12 divided by 4. And then, uh, oh, wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. You don't need the divide by 4 in this one. Okay, in this step, they give you the 12 divided by 4. And then you get x is equal to... 3. 12 divided by 4 gives you 3 in that substitution. You could also put simplify there. Okay, that works too. Okay, so guys, you are just solving equations, okay, but you're giving the reasons why. Why can you do those steps in an equation, okay? So let me go through this, all right? Let me just do it real quick. 4x plus 6 over 2 is equal to 9. If I was solving this equation, okay, I would multiply both sides because that satisfies the multiplication property of equality. I'm going to multiply by 2 on both sides, and then I'm going to simplify, all right? And then I'm going to get 4x plus 6 is equal to 18, okay? That's this next step. And then I'm going to divide, or sorry, subtract both sides by 6, and so then those go away. I get 4x is equal to 12, okay? I'm just simplifying that. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 4, divide both sides by 4, and I get x is equal to 3. So division property of equality and then simplify. Okay, so, you know, guys, you're doing a proof every time that you do any sort of algebra. It's just that we don't always require you to write out your steps. Okay, but that's something that can really help, especially if you struggle with solving equations. You've got to know the reason why. Why can I do that? Okay, so I hope that this helps. Uh, let's go ahead and get started on the homework, and we will see you guys soon. soon.